presentation of HBO Sports. Hello again, I'm Jim Lampley. On March 18, HBO Pay-Per-View takes you to sold-out Madison Square Garden for the latest make-or-break installment in the shoot-the-moon career of Kazakhstan's middleweight knockout sensation, Gennady Golovkin. 23 knockouts in a row and counting, 18 of them in title fights. The American opponent, once beaten Daniel Jacobs, has his own streak, 12 knockouts in a row coming in. So to help get you ready for Golovkin versus Jacobs, we're going to take you back to Triple G's most recent ring appearance. Last September 10, in London's sold-out O2 Arena against unbeaten British welterweight title holder Kell Brook. It was an unexpected business opportunity for both fighters. After Golovkin spent months pursuing his holy grail fight against Canelo Alvarez, Plan B was a contract agreement to fight England's Chris Eubank Jr. And when Eubank joined the roster of those who have shrunk from the Triple G assignment, Brook was asked if he might want to take the same deal and move up two divisions in weight. Kell Brook instantly realized he had little or nothing to lose, as long as he didn't get hurt. Here's how I called the fight with Bernard Hopkins. Can Kell Brook follow in the footsteps of fighters like Leonard and Griffith? We're about to see as he goes against Gennady Golovkin. There was a full-scale wave of speculation on the web, particularly in America yesterday, on the notion that Gennady Golovkin was ill under the web, didn't look good at the weigh-in. He and everyone in his camp says there is no truth whatsoever to that. He feels fine, and to us, he looked as though he felt perfectly all right. Agreed, Bernard? Well, he looks good now, and he's been who he is. He comes forward, he's looking for shots. To me, if this were a guy, this would a guy look like when he's sick, God knows what he'll look like when he's well. No, I think he's fine. I think it was just a rumor, and he said it wasn't true. Stalking much more aggressively than he did early in the Lemieux fight, looking more the way he did against Dominic Wade, trying to get in and land power shots. He takes a right hand from Brook as he's trying to land his left hook. Brook got some swelling, maybe a little bruise from the left right hook. Eye. From the right eye, from the left hook, from Triple G. Triple G is setting him up, and if he stay on that rope... Body shot, Brook is in trouble. And Brook reaches out and grabs Gennady Golovkin and gathers him to him after Golovkin hammered him to the liver with a body shot. If Cal Brook stay on that rope, he will not survive in this fight. He has to fight his fight. Right now, he's being overwhelmed and overpowered. Uppercut by Brook. Left hook brought the crowd alive. Golovkin nodding at him as if to say, OK, I tasted what you've got. Kel, Kel Brook is not staying in the middle of the ring. He got hurt. I think he's still hurt. And he has to now find a way to survive this round because Triple G is continuing to put pressure and he's continuing to make his punches count. Golovkin missed with the right hand over the top. Tapped Kel Brook with the left hook. Brook trying to fire body shots of his own to back Golovkin off a little bit. Brook has established that jab more than just one punch. He's throwing a jab, Brook, and throwing one punch at a time and going back towards the rope. He must keep Triple G in the center of the ring to try to at least get him some rounds under the belt where he can go ahead and figure it out. Triple G is number one in the sport by Papi Mox count in landing jabs. There's a good uppercut for Brook. There's a right hand for Brook. And now Golovkin comes back with the left hook. There's a mark outside Golovkin's left eye from the right hand by Hill Brook. 15 seconds left in round one. Both fighters have made statements. Golovkin won. Kell to try to get brave and try to be brave because that gives the puncher a bigger chance. Triple G will have a bigger and a greater chance in exchange. Crowd is happy with what they saw in round one. Here's the left. Because of Kell being on the rope, he got a quote with the left to the, to the kidney, rather, and he should have been moving, but he stayed there and got hit with a right hand. How to avoid that right hand is not be on the ropes. If he continues to stay on the ropes, this will happen more often. 
That was the biggest moment of round one when Brook reached out and grabbed Golovkin to pull him to him after the two left hands. There's the uppercut that landed for Brook, and there's the right hand, which may be the reason for a small mark outside of Golovkin's left eye. So both fighters are marked from the action in round one. Veteran referee Marlon Wright staying away and creating some distance to give freedom of movement to Golovkin and Brook. Brook must be active with that jab. He must be consistent with that jab. Not only patient, but consistent. Because if he sits there and wait and take a picture and look at Triple G, then he will receive, and he don't want to be on the end of those punches. He has to be first every time an exchange is being thrown by both men. And if he's not first, I don't believe he can take the power in a long fight with Triple G. Well, for better or for worse, he's not trying to stay away. Brook seems to have accepted the reality that he's going to have to fight with Triple G. Maybe he wants it that way. And they're trading in the center of the ring. And right now, Brook is getting the better of it as Gennady keeps his hands back. But he must not get too brave when he get too comfortable because Triple G is a high percentage knockout punch, but he can't, Cal Brook can't think about, Cal Brook can't think about the power, but he must think about the, the, what can happen as far as knockdown, hurt like he was before, so he must be conscious of that. Lovkin going to his jab now. Didn't seem interested in jabbing as much in round one. Now jabbing, set up the right hand. And Golovkin landing a series of jabs before sweeping a right hand across Brook. Brook is through a nice short counter left hook that poor Triple G coming in. Lovkin has not been knocked down in his professional career. And he says never in his amateur career either. 350 fights. One minute left in round number two. Brook is waiting to counter when Triple G throws one punch or a wild punch. He's waiting to counter. He's a better counter puncher when Triple G is coming in. Uppercut by Brook. Crowd comes out of its seats. Excited by the uppercut. Brook getting in some heavy shots here in round number two. Golovkin gets in a right hand over the top. But Brook comes back with a four-punch domination. Crowd is getting very excited. It started with an uppercut. Brook thought, threw a punch, and then he threw the uppercut, and he threw the uppercut again, and then he threw the right hand behind it. He's starting to put his punches together, and if he continue to do this in the later rounds, where he buy himself time, where he wears out Triple G to the point where Triple G is throwing one punch and trying to throw the knockout punch, then he might have something here. Brook seems to have realized early on that Golovkin wants to put pressure on him, wants to put him in a box, and he's landed effective uppercuts in both of the first two rounds. setting up that left uppercut because he threw the right lead first and he's seen this punch because before the round he tried it and he missed it this is the punch that can be effective if you continue to throw it in spots where it's needed Lovkin hasn't lost very many rounds recently in his career but he may well have lost the second round here against Kel Brook Brook must not get too brave, but smart enough to fight a smart man fight. Referee Marlon Wright is going to call that a slip rather than a knockdown. Golovkin totally in agreement. Now you see Golovkin. Golovkin. putting a lot of pressure on Brook. He's trying to now rush because what is urgency? Is urgency because 
he sees himself getting outboxed and getting hit with some shots that he never got hit with. And I'm pretty sure his trainer told him to go out there now and start putting pressure and start changing the tone of this fight. He's digging to the body with a three-punch combination. Triple G, jab right hand, left hook to the body, and got the attention of Brook. Brook didn't like that combination punch and definitely didn't like that left hand to the body. And unlike in the second round, when Brook was able to keep a lot of the action in the center of the ring where he likes it, Golovkin has been able to get him to the ropes a couple of times here in round number three. Hard right hand by Golovkin. Just misses with the left hook. Golovkin don't want, he don't want Brook to now get confidence. If Brook continue to win rounds here and there and go into a late rounds, then Golovkin's gonna have really a serious problem catching up. Not that he's in, in losing the fight, but he must now try to go ahead and establish his, his, his dominance. He's walking in, not even ducking. He's coming in just wanting to throw the power punch, but not be leery or worry about the jab because he's so confident that he can hit Brook and maybe hurt him. And Brook got a chance at a clean right hand there and landed a glancing blow. If he had landed it solidly, he could have hurt Golovkin. I think he is hurt, Jim. He got hit with a short uppercut just now with a right hand, and, and Brook is now throwing more than one punch. He's throwing right hands behind a left jab. If he continues to stay poised and pick at shots, but not get caught in a shootout or a fight where he gets the bad end of it. Brook is trying to build something memorable here. Golovkin is trying to reverse the momentum immediately. And Gennady gasping for breath. Those people who thought he was ill yesterday may be thinking again that they were onto something. But Golovkin keeps bearing in and putting pressure on Kel Brook here in round three. If you look at Brooks' right eye, it's starting to swell badly. And Triple G just threw a left and a straight right, right on that same eye with the left hand. And Brooks comes back aggressively, winning the admiration of the crowd. An excellent third round for both fighters. Here's Golovkin now seeing a position of throwing the right hand, which he did a right hook that came around the left hand of Brook. And the punch is there because he's sitting there. Now here go, now here we go with Cal throwing the same right hand and getting justice with it by throwing combinations after the jab. Gennady Golovkin has not thrown what I would call a lot of wild or desperation punches in the fights we've seen up to this moment. But he is swinging away sometimes here against Kell Brook, seeming to feel a sense of urgency because Brook, at moments here and there, is out boxing him, competing with him, perhaps won the second round. And Gennady Golovkin finds himself, it appears, in the closest thing to a real fight so far in this dominant career. And some frustrations. With Triple G showing some frustrations because, listen, Brook is actually putting a good boxing, but not running, boxing, moving, punching, slipping. Every now and then, Brook stays on the ropes and he pays the price, and his corners continue to tell him, don't be on the ropes, be in the center of the ring, or keep moving left to right. As you see on the ropes, Triple G has a shot when he's on the ropes. And Triple G tried so hard to land something that would be against Brook that he dropped his hands and left himself wide open to a Brook right hand. Brook face Brooke right is now. Brook landing some solid punches. Golovkin taking them so far. Yes, and Brook face right now is showing the effect of the power of Triple G. By the way, Harold Letterman is scoring this off of a television monitor in Los Angeles where he'll be working tonight at ringside. And we're told that Harold has it scored two rounds to one so far for Golovkin. He did indeed give the second round to Kell Brook, as I suggest it might be the case. Golovkin placing body shots now. 
One thing Brooke Heaven went back to, which was successful to me, was the uppercut. Whether it's coming from the left side or the right side, he hasn't thrown that punch since the first and second round. And he was successful with it in both the first and second rounds. Golovkin sticking the jab. They both throw him rabbit punches. Both fighters' faces have shown damage from the shots they've landed in the first three rounds. Lovkin is trying to hammer Brook to the liver one more time with the left hand. The way he hurt him in the first round, hasn't managed to land it here in the fourth. It looked like, it looked like Triple G is just actually, you know, pushing his punches. Doesn't look like he have any snap on it, Jim. It doesn't look like he had the, 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 the power that in, in speed, what I mean in speed, the power's there, but the speed is not there. They seem like arm punches, like he's throwing punches hard, but they're not, they have no snap on them. We call them arm punches in boxing. Brooke is much sharper, much cleaner. Quick, See the quick, quick that Brooke. Those are the kind of punches that Golovkin isn't landing at this point. And he's, he's getting hit spot on. This is called the bait and switch. He pulled him in to counter him. He pulled him in to throw a punch, which is Triple G. He threw the punch, he missed the punch, and he got countered with a good right hand. Once I don't see Kel Brook, that's it. You're gonna be there. You're still there. Right. Gum shield. What do you want? What do you want? There's some urgency from Engel talking to Brook as the swelling is starting to grow around Brook's eyes as round five begins. Let's go quickly to Harold Letterman to see how he scored the first four rounds. Harold? Okay, Jim. I've got it. Three rounds to one. 39, 37, Gennady Golovkin. Yeah, Jim, he, he keeps pushing him back, keeps landing hard shots. I, I just think that, it, you know, he's landing a clean on a lot of punches. But I gotta tell you, Jim, Cal Brook got some draw. I mean, I haven't seen a guy stand there and trade with Gennady Golovkin and God knows how long. Three to one, Golovkin. And Golovkin delivers his fiercest rally of the fight as Harold completes that scoring summary. Now Brooke holding out his arms as if to say, you're not hitting me at all as Golovkin does miss a series, but he landed a couple of hard right hands when he first got Brooke to the ropes, Bernard. And Brooke is putting his hands up like he wasn't hurt, but you know, he might be hurt later by the accumulation of those punches. So I think he should stay focused. I think he was hurt a little bit, and I think that's the reason that you do those things is to let the opponent know that you're not hurt, but that normally means the opposite. Brook was momentarily rubbing his right eye with his glove. Now he lashes out and manages to knock Golovkin back with a couple of clean shots. But he's leaving his feet, Jim, when he throw a punch, and not only is no power on those punches, he needs himself to get countered like he just did with a straight right, and, and I believe he's hurt with this, and now Triple G is going to keep him there if he can. Brook once again erupts off the ropes. We're only halfway through the fifth round. And Golovkin is now landing body shots again, as he did in round number one. And yes, he is. He's pop shotting right now, and as you see in a straight right. And Dominic, Dominic, in, the, hurt. in the far corner, hurt. is holding up a towel. Engel is trying to get referee Marlon Wright to stop the fight, and now he finally throws the towel into the ring, and Gennady Golovkin is going to have a technical knockout victory in round number five. And that's an amazing decision on the part of Dominic Engel. We saw his urgency between rounds prior to that round, but who would have thought that he was on the verge of getting up on the ropes with a towel? Bernard, you're I don't, I don't agree. You don't understand I, it? I, I don't understand it. He was getting hit with shots, Jim, but you've seen the heart in him. He got hurt early in the fight. He, he really fought back in those rounds to get to where he at least was in that same position, but he, he, he got out of that position. I don't see no difference than when he got hurt 
earlier than that stoppage of being buzzed to the point where he stopped the fight. We're going to have to wait to hear stop. what Dominic Ingle has to say about what he did. Obviously it's going to be fascinating to hear what Kell Brook thinks about the stoppage and about how he was doing to that point in the fight against Gennady Golovkin. The crowd is mystified to say the least but the fight is stopped and Golovkin has a technical knockout victory. Knockout number 23 in a row. This is earlier in round five, Bernard. Exactly. Here's it right now. To me, he's he just as hurt here where where his legs is not under and, him. And then and you can see Dominic the the waving the towel. Here. And so that's what I believe that, you know, it was a bad stop. It's let the man finish. This is an opportunity to make history, opportunity to fight your way back. That's what we do. Engel must have thought that the tide had turned, that his fighter was in effect out of the fight, and he wanted to prevent further damage to a great welterweight fighter if, in fact, he's going to go back to welterweight or maybe a terrific junior middleweight or middleweight, depending on where his future lies. But it looked as though Engel had made a decision to protect Brooks' future. I think it was more of emotions. I think that was the decisions off emotions and not off of what's, what's at stake. And to me, personally, I don't think as a fighter and also as a person outside looking in that a fighter wants to go out uh, on, his, on, his, on, on his back if he has to for an opportunity like this. And to me, he wasn't as hurt as he was round two, round three. Whenever those rounds earlier was, he wasn't as hurt as he was hurt now. And it seemed like a tremendous opportunity because both you and I, I think, were observing that Golovkin wasn't at his best. This was not a sharp effort in it, particular by Gennady it, Golovkin. It was, a lot of arm, it was a lot of arm punches by Triple G. It was a lot of sucking air in. And I didn't see the snap on his punches. I seen him following more than cutting the ring off and actually throwing punches, you know, with, with meaning to it, to the body and to the head. Tonight was a night I think he was vulnerable than any fight that ever watched him. I thought he was vulnerable too, particularly if Brook could have been more precise with his counter punches. But at the end of the day, Golovkin did enough damage, particularly in round five, for the people in Brook's corner to choose to bring an end to it. That was not a decision by referee Marlon Wright to stop the fight. That was a decision by Kell Brook's corner. And Golovkin, among many things that he must be feeling, you would have to assume that relief is one of them. One that of them, was the easy way out. One of them is, 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 is relief. And you, you know, to, to still be on that run of, of defenses and also um, victory, um, yes, is, is a win is a win. And however he got it, he did his job. Standing in front of us, ring announcer Michael Buffer is waiting to deliver the particulars on the technical knockout, but he has to await a cue from Britain's Sky Television, which is the host broadcaster for the event. So as Golovkin poses for photographs behind Michael Buffer, Buffer waits for a cue from Sky Television, and the questions are continuing over in Kell Brook's corner, where the fighter, his brother, and perhaps some others are interested in an explanation as to why the fight was stopped. A sense of anticlimax at the O2 Arena. The now here's Michael. The red corner indicated to referee Marlon Wright to call a halt to the contest. Challenger retires. The winner by TKO victory. His record now 36 and 0, 33 KOs, 23 consecutive wins by knockout. Still, the undefeated, universally recognized middleweight. Champion of the world, Gennady. Gennadyovic Golovkin, a.k.a. Triple G.
So we now wait at ringside for our turn to interview the fighters. And once again, the host broadcaster is Sky Television. Most likely, both Gennady Golovkin and Kell Brook will be interviewed first by British television broadcasters before they are brought over to us. Bernard Hopkins, a quick recap on what we saw in less than five rounds of action. The first round was exciting. The third round was tremendously exciting. The second round was an education of sorts as Kell Brook outboxed, outboxed Gennady Golovkin and landed some clean shots. All in all, a vulnerable-looking Golovkin nevertheless walked away with a TKO victory. Yes, a victory is a victory. You know, this fight here showed a lot. It showed a lot about Kell. He really came in there with a, a game plan based on being in the fight enough where he made Triple G look vulnerable. And you know, Triple G did his job. He threw a lot of punches, but not as effective as we used to we used to seeing him as throwing punches. And and to me, I seen a vulnerable night. I seen an opportunity for Kell Brook to be able to make history. But you know, you, you can't charge, and I would not charge Triple G for the way the fight ended. It ended because obviously the corner was looking out for their fighter. Uh, I'm looking forward to what's next. I'm looking forward to see um, a middleweight make history by defenses, and whatever he do after that will be good for himself, but also good for the history, the sport of boxing. Uh, because of what we saw, I think one question that's likely to come up immediately following the fight right now in post-fight interviews was this firestorm of web speculation in the United States yesterday that Golovkin was in some way ill, that he was compromised going into the fight. No doubt that becomes a question in the mind of many fans now after he looked less than like Triple G for much of this fight. Yeah, I mean, he didn't look like Triple G that I used to see him. So maybe with some little truth to that, we will find out later on. But listen, even being sick if he was, he showed power. He also showed that he deserved to be in this position. Um, I'm just excited to watch to see what happens next, who he fight next. Hope is someone that we all care about to see. And you know what? Right now in the middleweight division, I can say Jim is in good hands and is also is being talked about on a high stage. Well, maybe Golovkin looked vulnerable enough tonight that we have a chance to see uh, some of the big fights against big name opponents that we've been waiting for and that he has not been able to attract so far. Meanwhile, uh, I'm being told by our producer Dave Harmon that we are going to show the entire fifth round now to look back at it. And it's going on right now to look at what happened in the fifth round, but I must tell you that we have no ringside monitor, so while you at home can see it, we can't. Well, let's step back over to our announce position here. Aha. So here's what's going on in the fifth round. And at this point, it appears, Bernard, that Golovkin has gotten Brook into trouble. Yes, he has him in trouble because he's on the ropes, but a lot of those punches went over the top. As you see, Kel Brook put his hands up, he ain't doing nothing, and he didn't get hit with four or five of those punches. But this way I see that he has an opportunity now, that is Cal Brook, to be able to Kel, to be able to throw that jab and throw that right hand and maybe get Triple G to run into something. But he didn't get that opportunity as far as I'm concerned. All right, I'm getting into the position right now, and here comes Gennady Golovkin. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, here's Gennady Golovkin at ringside, and Gennady, we've just been showing our viewers everything that happened in round five. I think there was a surprise to a lot of people when Dominic Ingle in Brooks Corner chose to throw in the towel. Were you as surprised as everyone at ringside by that? No, it's not a surprise. It's first of all, respect Kel. Kel, he's a good fighter. He's a huge fighter. And he's not middleweight. You know, he's, he's not his division. And you could tell that from the first round that he was not, in fact, big enough or strong enough to give a good account of himself in the fight. Is that right? Yes, you're right. I promise bringing big drama show like street fight. Look, this is not boxing. This is like street fight. I feel it's, it's finished. I feel it's game, game over. But he boxed well in the second round. He counterpunched you effectively. He actually won the second round in the eyes of, of some judges. Uh, and, and there were moments in the fight when he appeared to be competitive with you. Wouldn't you agree? You know, just I think I lost all rounds. Maybe just maybe first, first round I beat him and second round just knock him down. And I, I feel it's finished. You know, maybe a couple rounds more and that's it. Because, you know, I don't feel power. I don't feel... Yeah, he 
touch me, and I don't feel. You did some wild swinging. Were you trying to go ahead and get the knockout immediately? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I want short sound. No, just able to tell me. Just, just take your time. Just not box. Just pressing him because he's broken. Bernard, do you have a question for Gennady? Did you feel any threat in, in any round where you feel that you uh, have to be cautious or careful once you felt his power? Did you respect his power to be able to be cautious walking in? Yeah, but I don't feel his power. I feel his distance. He has great distance. You know, he feels me. And after the second round, I understand it's not boxing. I need street fight. Like, you know, just broke him. That's it. There was a sudden outbreak of speculation on the web, particularly in America yesterday, that you were sick, that that you had an illness, that you didn't feel good at the weigh-in, that you looked pale, etc. Is any of that true? No, it is not true. You know, I feel it's great just because I'm not smile. You know, this is serious business. You know, this is serious business. I'm. I know. I understand this business. I understand my my situation in middleweight division. I feel after the first round, he is. He's not middleweight, and I'm not scary. One so, to ten, how would you rate yourself in this? From one to ten, how would you rate this fight? Your, 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 your performance. performance. My performance? Three or four. <laughs> not good. Just not good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you no, know, I promise bring drama show. Uh-huh. So, so the, the reason you would say three or four is because you were too anxious to go ahead and get the knockout. Is that right? Yeah, be, yeah because, no, because... I'm today just not boxing, not like world class, boxing world class, you know, like street fight, like like sparring, this is like sparring, you know. All right, well, you need the focus and concentration of fighting the best in the world. Abel, let's bring in your trainer, Abel Sanchez, here for a moment. Abel, what were you saying to Gennady throughout the fight? He says it was a three or a four. How did you feel about his performance? Uh, about a four, yes. Uh -huh. uh, he was trying He was trying too hard to knock uh, Kel out. Um, the uh, the not smiling yesterday. He had an hour and forty minute ride. He was upset. He wanted to get on the scale and get out of here. But um, he just was trying too hard. I was trying to tell him it's a twelve round fight. Just beat beat on him. Beat on him. Practice. Uh, I wanted him to use the jab more. He wasn't. He's uh, used it half the round and then he wouldn't use it. But um, the corner did the right thing. It was a matter of time. He was taking too many clean shots. At that point where they stopped it, uh, it was over. I mean, Gennady knew it was over and he was touching him with too many clean shots. Uh, I think something's wrong with his eye and, and uh, the heavy hands eventually were going to hurt him permanent. You're talking about uh, Brooks' right eye, which began to swell almost immediately after Gennady landed a left hook in the first round. Did Dominic say something to you about that when you spoke to him afterward in the corner? Uh, actually, I noticed that in the second round. He kept pointing to it and kept touching it. Uh, Kel did. And... Um, uh, Dom did say something and something was wrong with his eye, but it wasn't so much his eye He was just getting touched with too many clean shots and that can be very dangerous. He's a skilled fighter. He's very marketable He's got a future. Do you think that Dominic was thinking of protecting his future when he stopped the fight? Oh, absolutely very skilled, uh, but he's a welterweight with faster hands and faster feet as we discussed in, in, in the meetings um, We knew that he was gonna be fast, but we knew in time we we're gonna break him down It's just that he was a little anxious. He was reaching a little too much with his hook but um, he wanted he wanted to put on a show for the for the crowd. He allowed himself to get into a bar fight, and uh, it, he didn't look as good as he, we wanted him to. But we won. The only other fighter with a middleweight belt right now is Billy Joe Saunders. Canelo Alvarez still has, in the eyes of many, the so-called lineal championship. Who do you want to fight next? Yeah, Billy Joe Saunders, because my goal is all the belts in the middle division. Just I want unification fight. I need my last belt. Now as we prepare for Gennady Golovkin's March 18 middleweight championship defense against Brooklyn's Daniel Jacobs in Manhattan's Madison Square Garden, it is with the not unreasonable expectation that another Triple G win propels him forward toward the biggest fight boxing can now make, his long-awaited showdown with Canelo Alvarez. But Daniel Jacobs is no mere stepping stone. And in the wake of Brooks' logical corner stoppage, he now becomes the latest to assume what has up to now been a fruitless identity. Best opponent yet to have gone into the ring with Triple G. Be with us on HBO Pay-Per-View the night of March 18 for Gennady Golovkin versus Daniel Jacobs, live from Madison Square Garden.